In this video, we will do a complete Vocaloid production as far as the audio is concerned. We will use Vocaloid 5 Editor and Advent software, Sibelius, and Pro Tools. All this software costs money. In the description, there are links to where you can purchase legal copies. First, we will compose a score in Sibelius. Composing MIDI files in Sibelius is a good way to write songs if you don't play any instruments yourself. The computer will play the files flawlessly. We will write lyrics for three four-line verses and a chorus that will follow a rigid rhyme scheme. We will take the lyrics and the MIDI of the voice track from Sibelius and in Vocaloid 5 Editor we will make a wave file of our Vocaloid singing the voice part. We will take this wave file and import it into the DAW Pro Tools. We will also import a MIDI file of the instruments into Pro Tools and use it with the wave file to master our Vocaloid song and make a wave file and mp3 file that we can use in a Vocaloid production. With all that said, open Sibelius and let's get started. Click on the Sibelius icon and a quick start window will appear. Click on New Score and select the blank page. Click on the Change Instrument buttons and an Add or Remove Instrument window appears. Click on Keyboards, then Piano, until Piano A and Piano B appear on the right. Then click on Singers and go to Alto if your Vocaloid is a female or Tenor if your Vocaloid is a male. I'm using Gummy, so I'm choosing Alto. So click on it until it appears on the right. Then go to Guitars, click on Bass Guitar Notation until one appears on the right. Then in Guitars, click on Acoustic Guitar Notation twice so that you have two Acoustic Guitar Notation on the right. Then go to Percussion and Drums and click on Drum Set Rock until one appears on the right. Then go to Brass and click on Trombone until one appears on the right. Then go to Woodwind and click on Flute until one appears on the right. Then go and click OK. Then set the sign time signature to 5-8, then scroll down to Tempo. Put a check in the metronome mark box and set the tempo to 160 beats a minute. Then set the key signature to G major. Scroll down to score information setup and fill out the information. I give my scores a number first and then an, and a name later, so I am calling this score song 7 for now. Put your name in the composer, lyricist, and copyright. Then go down and click create. The quick start window cl closes and the score opens up showing five empty bars with your instruments down the side. Go to File, Save, and Sibelius will save in the Scores folder in your Documents folder. Make a folder for your song in the Scores folder and save it th there so you can keep all your files there. That way all your Vocaloid files will be in one spot and the MIDI files you export will save there also. Click on and highlight the first drum bar, then hold the control key and use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in on the first drum bar. Then hit Escape three times on your keypad Set it on Voice 1 Blue, go to View Keypad if you don't see it, and then set it to the 8th note, then hold the alternate shift keys down and hit 1. This will change the notes to the symbols and the top of the note will look like an X. Put 5 hi-hat notes along the top open space. Then hit Escape and click on and highlight the first drum bar. Hold the control key down and scroll out a little with your mouse wheel to zoom out so that you can see four drum bars. Then hit control C to copy the first drum bar. Then hold the shift key down and select the fourth drum bar. Then hit the control V to paste into them. Hit escape and on your keypad set it to voice to green and select the quarter note. Put a note on the bottom line bass drum and a note on the top center space snare drum. You will need another note on the bottom line bass drum, but there is only room for an eighth note. Put a quarter note there and two eighth notes appear that are tied between bar one and two. Continue putting in quarter notes on the bass drum and snare until you get to the end of bar three. Then you will have two eighth notes tied between bar three and bar four on the snare drum centers. Continue putting in quarter notes until you end with the snare drum note in bar four. Then go back and delete the ties between bars 1 and 2 and bars 3 and 4. Then select bar 1 of the drums, 
hold the shift key down and select bar 4 of the drums so that bars 1 through 4 are selected and hit Ctrl C. Then select the empty bar 5 of the drums and hit Ctrl V to paste the drums into it. Then hit Ctrl B, then escape, then select the new drum bar 9 and hit Ctrl V to paste 4 more bars of drums into the score. Select the fourth drum bar and use control and the mouse wheel to zoom in, then hit escape on your keypad, leave it on voice 2 green, and select the 16th note. Then starting on the bass drum note in bar 4, put in 8 16th notes in the snare drum to center space. Then select the second hi-hat in bar 4 and go up arrow once to make it a cymbal crash. Then hit the half note on the keypad to make it a cymbal, to make the cymbal crash a half note. Select bar 4 of the drums and hit Control c Then zoom out by holding the control and use the mouse wheel. And select the last drum bar and hit Control v to paste the snare roll bar into it. Then hit Escape on, and on your keypad set it to voice 1 blue and select the 8th note. Then in the titles down the side of the page, change the first acoustic guitar to lead guitar and the second acoustic guitar to rhythm guitar. Then on the titles on the second page, change the first A to L and the second A to R to represent the lead and rhythm guitars. Now let's find the chords naturally in the key of G major. The G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. And if you apply the formula major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, you get G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, and F sharp diminished. Let's start with the key minor, which is E minor in the first bar, and then A minor in the second, then B minor in the third bar, and E minor again in the fourth bar. With the keypad set on voice one blue, hit escape and hit control K, and your cursor will be a blue arrow. Click it above the lead guitar bar one and type EM space, AM space, BM space, and three guitar symbols will appear. Drag the B minor chord symbol over to bar 3 and drag the A minor chord symbol over to bar 2. Then go to view fretboard and call up your fretboard and drag it to under the lead guitar. Then select the 8th note on the keypad and put an E in the first space of bar 1. Then put an A in the first space of bar 2 and then a B in the first space of bar 3. Now click on the E minor chord symbol to see where to put the notes on the fretboard. To click on the notes and put them in by clicking on the fretboard. When you can click on the chord symbol and click on the notes and they do not change, you have it right. Now click on the A minor chord symbol to see where to put the note. Click on the note and put them in by clicking on the fretboard. When you can click on the chord symbol and then click on the notes and they do not change, you got it. Now click on the B minor chord symbol to see where to put the notes. Click on the notes and put them in. When the symbol matches the notes, you have it. Now click on the bottom note of the E minor chord, hold the shift key down and click on the top note of the chord so that the whole chord is selected and hit control. Ctrl C to copy it. Then select the rest of bar 1 including the chord symbol and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. The chord symbol will disappear and the bar will be full of E minor chords in it. You don't want a bunch of chord symbols when you cut and paste. Select the A minor chord and copy it. Then select the rest of bar 2 and paste into it. Then select the B minor chord and hit Ctrl C to copy it. Then select the rest of bar 3 and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then select bar 1 of the lead guitar and hit Ctrl C to copy it, then select bar 4 of the lead guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then hold the shift key down and select bar 1 of the lead guitar so that bars 1 through 4 are selected and hit Ctrl C to copy. Then hold the control button down with, and with the mouse wheel zoom out so you can see all the instruments. Then select bar 1 of the flute and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then while it is still selected hit Ctrl up arrow to bring the notes into better range. Then select the first bar of the trombone and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. While the notes are still selected, go Ctrl down arrow to bring the notes into better range. Then select the first bar of the rhythm guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then select both first bars of the piano then hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then escape and select bar 1 of the top piano. Hold the shift key down and select bar 4 so that 1 bars 1 through 4 are selected. Then go control up arrow. Then select bar 1 of the bass piano. Hold the shift key down and select bar 4 so that all 4 bars of bass piano are selected. And go control down arrow. Then go to view mixer and call up your mixer. Drag it up on the page and grab the bottom and drag it down to see all the information. Then click twice on and mute the flute, trombone, lead guitar, and piano A and B. Then click once 
and mute by half the rhythm guitar. Then close the mixer and save the file. Select bar 1 of the bass guitar and hold the control key down and zoom in with the mouse wheel. Hit escape, then set the keypad to voice 1 blue and select the 8th note. Then put 5 8th notes on low E in the first bar of the bass guitar. Then select bar 1 of the bass guitar and hit control C. Then hold the shift key down and select bar 4 of the bass guitar and hit control V to paste 4 bars of low E into them. Then escape and select bar 2 of the bass guitar and go up arrow 3 times until the notes are on bass clef A. Then select bar 3 of the bass guitar and go up arrow 4 times until the notes are on bass clef B. Now hold the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out. Then select bar 1 of the lead guitar and hold the shift key down and select bar the first bar of the bass guitar so that the first bar of the lead and bass guitars are selected and hit control C to copy. Then select Rhythm Guitar Bar 5, hold the shift key down, and select Rhythm Guitar Bar 6, so that bars 5 and 6 of the Rhythm Guitar are selected. Then hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then select bars 11 and 12 of the Rhythm Guitar, and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then select bar 2 of the Rhythm Guitar and Bass Guitar, and hit Ctrl C to copy. Then select bars 7 and 8 of the Rhythm Guitar, and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then select bar 3 of the rhythm guitar and bass guitar and hit control C. Then select bars 9 and 10 of the rhythm guitar and hit control V to paste into them. Go to the first chord in bar 5 of the rhythm guitar. Click on the top note then hold the shift key down and click on the bottom note of the second chord. Hit delete and delete them from the score. Now go along and leave two chords and delete the next two chords. Go along and do this until you have the rest of the rhythm guitar bars 5 through 12. Take your time because it's easy to mess up. You will end up in bar 12 with two chords in the last two spots. Click on bar 5 of the voice, in which in my case is alto, and hold the control key and scroll in with the mouse wheel to zoom in on it. Then set your keypad to voice 1 blue and select the quarter note. Put in quarter notes on treble E across bars 5 and 6. There will be a tie between two eighth notes between the bars. Select bars 5 and 6 of the voice and hit Ctrl C to copy them. Then hold the Ctrl key and with the mouse wheel zoom out until you can see the rest of the bars on the voice. Hold the shift key down and select bars 12 of the voice so that bars 5 through 12 are selected and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Hit escape and then select bars 7 and 8 of the voice and go up arrow 3 times then Ctrl down arrow once to drop it in octave. If you are, have a tenor voice, you don't need to drop it in octave. Then select bars 9 and 10 of the voice and go up arrow 4 times, then control down arrow once if you are an alto. Now hit escape 3 times, then hit control S, then control bracket, then the space bar to save your score. Return the player to the front of the score and to play your score. Make sure everything sounds good, then click on the first quarter note of bar 11 in the voice and hit 5 on the keypad to change it to a half note. Now select the last note in bar 11 and all of bar 12 of the voice and delete them. Then counting the half note as 1, count backwards 10 notes. Count the tied 8 note pairs as 1 note. Select the notes in bar 5, 6 and the first note in bar 7 leaving 10 notes behind and hit delete. Select the first note in bar 7 and hit the dot on the keypad to change it to a dotted quarter note. Then select the first note in bar 9 and hit the dot on the keypad to change it to a dotted quarter note. Then select the first note after the tie in bar 10 and hit the dot on the keypad to change it to a dotted quarter note. Hold the control key down and zoom out with your mouse wheel so that you can see the whole score. Select bar 5 of the flute, hold the shift key down and select bar 12 of the bass piano so that all the music in bar 5 through 12 are selected. Then hit Ctrl C to copy it, then hit Ctrl B to call up a new bar, then hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then hit Ctrl B, then Ctrl V, then one more time Ctrl B, then Ctrl V. You should have a total of 4 voice sections. You can tell where these sections are by the roll of the snare that divides them. Hit escape and look at the third voice section. You're looking for bar 23 of the rhythm guitar and if you look at the top of the page on the left hand corner you will see the number of the bar and with this information you can count over to bar 23 of the rhythm guitar and click on it and zoom in by holding the control and use the mouse wheel.
call up your fretboard by going to View Fretboard and drag it to under bar 23 of the rhythm guitar. Make sure your keypad is on voice 1 blue, then hit escape 3 times, then hit Control K and your cursor will be a blue arrow. Click it above the rhythm guitar bar 23 and type C space, D space and two chord symbols will appear. L leave the C major symbol over bar 23 and 24 and move the D major symbol over bar 25 and 26. Click on the C major chord symbol to see where to put the notes. Click on the first A minor chord and change it to C major by clicking on it on the fretboard. Now click on the D major chord symbol to see where to put the note. Cl then click on the first B minor to change it to a D major by clicking it on the fretboard. Now delete the two chord symbols, then select all of the C major chord and hit Control C. Then one at a time select the rest of the six A minor chords in bars 23 and 24 and Control V them in. Then select all the D major chord in bar 25 and hit Control C to copy it. Then select one at a time the remaining four B minors in bars 25 and 26 and hit Control V to paste them in. Then go and close the fretboard and zoom out a little with the Control key and mouse wheel until you can see the bass guitar and voice of bars 23 through 26. Click on bar 23 of the bass guitar. Hold the shift key down and select bar 26 of the voice the bars 23 through 26 of the bass guitar and voice are selected then go up arrow twice to bring the bars 23 and 24 to the note C and bars 25 and 26 to the note D in both the bass guitar and voice then hit escape then hit control S to save then control bracket set the player to the front then hit the space bar and make sure everything sounds good now zoom in on the last eight bars of the drum and select the first bar after the roll of the snare. Hold the shift key down and select the next four bars of drum and hit control C to copy it. Then hit control B to call up a new bar. Then hit escape and select the new empty drum bar and hit control V to paste into it. Then select the drum bar just after the drum roll and hold the shift key down and select eight bars of drums to the roll of the snare and hit control C to copy. Then hit Ctrl B, then escape and select the new blank drum bar and hit Ctrl B to paste into it. You should have 12 new bars of drum in your score. Now go to the last chord in the score in the rhythm guitar, which is E minor, and select the top note. Hold the shift key down and select the bass guitar note so that one E minor chord and one bass guitar note is selected. Hit Ctrl C to copy. Then select the first two empty bars of the rhythm guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Now select the last six bars of the rhythm guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then drag your score over back to find an A minor chord. You can tell it is an A minor chord because this note, which is the bottom of these three notes in a row, is on A. Select the top note of the chord, hold the shift key and select the bass guitar note underneath so that both the chord and bass guitar note are selected. Hit Control C, then drag your score to the end and select the next two empty rhythm guitar bars and paste into them. Then drag the score back over and find a B minor chord and select the chord and one note of the bass guitar and hit Control C and drag the score back to the end and paste B minor chords and bass into the two remaining blank bars. Then zoom in on the fourth bar from the end and go to view fretboard and call it up and drag it under the fourth bar from the end. Then hit escape and can hit control K and your cursor will be a blue arrow because the keypad is on voice one blue. Click it above the rhythm guitar bar and type G space. A G major guitar chord symbol will appear. Click on it to see where to put the notes. Click on the first chord in the fourth bar from the end and change the E minor to a G major. Then select the new G major chord and hit Control C to copy. Then select the fourth bar and third bar from the end and paste it into it by hitting Control V. Then select the two bass guitar bars under the G major and go up arrow twice to put the notes on all of the, its notes on G. Now hit escape and zoom in on the voice bar 37. This is the first bar of the new part. Set your keypad to voice one blue and select the quarter note. In your in voice bar 37, put in five quarter notes on E. There is a tie between bar 37 and bar 38. Hit escape and select the two voice bars and hit control C, then highlight the next empty voice bar and hit control V. Then while it is still selected, go up arrow three times. Then select the next empty voice bar and hit control V. Then while it is still selected, go up arrow four times. Then select the next empty voice bar and go control V. Then leave it where it is. Then select the next empty voice bar and hit control V. Then go up arrow twice. 
Y. Then select the next empty voice bar and hit Control V and leave it where it is and, and hit Escape. Then hit Control S to save. Then Control bracket to move the player to the front. Then hit the space bar and listen for mistakes and fix them. Then right click on the full score tab and go to your voice part, be it tenor or alto. In my case, alto because I intend to use gummy. And you will see you have four lines of a verse and lyric template and a long line at the end of an unworked lyric template that will make up the chorus. So we need two ten note lines of lyrics templates for a chorus. Go to bar 47 and make the first note a half note. Then select and delete the last three notes. Then count back 10 notes and select and delete the 11th note. Then select the first note in bar 41 and make it a half note. Then select and delete the notes between the lines. Then select and delete the first note in bar 37 so that you have two lines with 10 notes each. Go to the middle note in bar 38, click on it and hit the dot on your keypad to make it a dotted quarter note. Go to the middle note of bar 39, make it a dotted quarter note. And go to the middle note of bar 40 and make it a dotted quarter note. Go to the middle boat note of bar 44 and make it a dotted quarter note. Go to the middle note of bar 45 and make it a dotted quarter note. Then last go to bar 46 and make the middle note a dotted quarter note. You will have six lines of lyrics templates. The first four lines are going to be the verses and the last two lines are the chorus. Go to the last note on line two and down arrow three times. Then go to the last note on line four and down arrow it three times. Now we are going to up and down arrow notes in the lyrics templates. You can go up arrow twice, then up arrow twice, then up arrow three times, and stay on the chord. You can go down arrow three times, then down arrow twice, then down arrow twice, and stay on the chord. Zoom in on the first line of the lyrics template, select the second note and go up arrow twice. Select the third note and go up arrow twice, then up arrow twice, then select the fourth note over and go up two, up two, up three. Then go to the fifth note over and go up two, up two, up three. Then go to the sixth note over and go up two, up two. Then select both notes in the tie and go up two. Leave the note seven where it is and go up two on note eight and leave the last note in place. Now what you did on line one, you need to do on lines two through six, move notes up two, up two, up three, or down three, down two, down two to stay on the chord. Leave the last note of each line in place as we already moved those. When you are done, it should look something like this. Now close the voice part and go back to full score and zoom in on the first four bars where there are solo templates in the flute, trombone, lead guitar, and piano. Zoom in on the flute, call up your mixer, and unmute the flute using simple notes put in a flute solo. In the first bar, I put a half note and an eighth note then in the second bar, I put five eighth notes along the chord. Then in the third bar, I put a half note and an eighth note. Then in the fourth bar, I put five eighth notes along the chord. Put in something similar, but with your own twist. Then play the score and check the flute solo and fix any mistakes. Then open the mixer and mute the flute and unmute the trombone. Then put in a solo for the trombone. In the first bar, I put five eighth notes. Then in the second bar, I put an eighth note and a half note. Then in the third bar, I put a half note, then an eighth note. And in the fourth bar, I put in five eighth notes. Once you have a solo in, play it and fix anything wrong. Then open your mixer and mute the trombone and unmute the lead guitar. Zoom in on the lead guitar and in the first bar, hit the first three notes going down the chord in eighth notes, then hit the whole chord twice. Do the same technique in bar two, then again in bar three, and then in bar four. Then listen to your score and fix any mistakes. Open your mixer and mute the lead guitar and unmute both piano tracks. Zoom in on the first four bars of the piano and in the first bar run three eighth notes down the chord then hit three notes of the chord twice. Then in the second bar I just ran eighth notes up and down the chord and continued the, this in bar three. Then in bar four I did the same as bar one. Play your score and correct any mistakes, then open your mixer and unmute everything but the rhythm guitar, which is muted by half. Zoom out and select the first bar of the flute. Hit Ctrl N to go to the end of the score and hold the shift key down and select the bottom last piano bar so that all of your score is selected. Then hit Ctrl C to copy it. Then hit Ctrl B to call up a bar. Then Ctrl V to paste into it. 
then again control B, then control V. You now have three copies of your score in a row. Hit control home to go to the front of your score and select bar one of the flute. Hold the shift key down and select bar four of the bottom piano, then hit control C to copy, then control B to call up a new bar, then control V to paste into it. Control end will take you to the end. Now right click on the full score tab and go to the flute part and leave the first solo and select and delete the second, third and fourth solo, then hit Ctrl S, then close the flute and open the trombone by right clicking on the full score tab. Select and delete the first solo, leave the second solo, and select and delete the third and fourth solo. Close the trombone part and open the lead guitar part and select and delete the first two solos. Leave the third solo and select and delete the first fourth solo. Then close the lead guitar and save. Open the piano part and select and delete the first three solos. Close the piano part and hit escape, then control bracket and hit the space bar. Listen to your song for any mistakes and fix them. Once you're satisfied, you, you are finished composing your score. Now right click on the full score tab and open your voice part, in my case the alto. Go to file export MIDI and export a MIDI of your voice track. Name the file so that you know it is just the voice and it will save in the folder you made for your the score. Now go to view mixer and call up the mixer and mute the voice track and unmute by half the rhythm guitar so that just the voice is muted. Then go to the full score and go to file export MIDI and export a MIDI of the whole score. The muted voice will not export on the full score so that you have just the instrument. We will use a WAV file of the voice now right click on the full score tab and go to your voice. You need to make a lyrics outline for your score so that we can plan the lyrics rhyme scheme. Go along and count the notes in each line of lyrics. If you did as directed you should have 10 notes in every line. If not then make a custom lyrics outline with the notes you do have. In mind there is a verse with 4 10 note lines, then a chorus with 2 10 note lines, then another verse with 4 10 note lines, then the chorus repeats with two 10 note lines, then last the verse with four 10 note lines, and then the chorus repeats on the last two 10 note lines. Map out this information with a number representing the number of notes, or in this case of lyrics, the number of syllables. All of mine have a value of 10 because I put 10 notes in each line. Next to this number is a letter that represents the rhyme scheme. For example, my first verse is 10A, 10B, 10A, 10B. This shows that the first line rhymes with the third line and the second line rhymes with the fourth. This is what my lyrics outline looks like. Now we need a subject for our song. I'm going to write about a neighborhood cat that I call Will Ferrell. The first thing you need to do is write down information on your subject. Will Ferrell is a normal brown tabby domestic short hair cat. He showed up about two years ago and he lives outside. He is very nice. He is a very nice friendly cat and it is sad that he has no real home. He was neutered and released and has his ear clipped and has had his rabies vaccine. I thought he would be mad that I caught him but he was not. He comes every morning to eat and I'm always happy to see him. Writing the first two lines of the verse is pretty straightforward, as they do not rhyme. I was upset the first time I saw him, so I need to express this in a ten syllable. So my first line is, I was upset the first day you came. And my second line is, when you showed up on my porch two years ago. Each of these lines has ten syllables, so they will fit our song. The last word of the first line is came, and the third line needs to rhyme with it. If you Google words that rhyme, you can find a site like Rhyme Zone, and if you go there and type in the word came, you can see it rhymes with the word name. And since he has the silly name, I wrote a ten syllable line ending with name. Now the second line ends with the word ago, and in Rhyme Zone I found go, and I worked that into a 10 syllable line where he had no home with which to go. So that worked and ended the first verse. Now we need a chorus that will repeat in two 10 syllable lines that rhyme. The first line is easy because you can say anything and you don't have to rhyme yet. So I said Will Ferrell, the nice cat from the mean streets. Then I went to rhyme zone and found that streets rhymes with greets. So I worked in a 10 syllable line that ends in greets. That gives me one verse of four lines and one chorus of two lines. This is all I'm going to do, but you need to do two more verses. With four lines each that follow the rhyme scheme. I use CorelDRAW to write my lyrics. By doing them in a draw program, I can use them for subtitles. You can type your lyrics into any word processor and then copy and paste them into the Vocaloid 5 editor. 
If you don't have a word processor, then you can write them down on paper. Once you have lyrics that match your score, you can open Vocaloid 5 Editor. Click on a new project and the software will open up. Go to File Import, navigate to your score folder and import the voice MIDI that you made in Sibelius. Click Yes and Import Tempo and Time Signature and click OK on the recommended voice because we will change it. The notes in your voice MIDI will appear in a track under a blank track. Click on the blank track and delete it. Click on the notes on the track display and you can go to the voice tab and change your voice. Go to File Save and save the VSQ in the files folder you made. I titled this file with the no song number and the Vocaloid's name. Click again on the notes and on the track display and the piano roll display will appear. Click under the first note and a text box will appear. Open the program your lyrics are in if you have one and copy the first line of the first verse. Then go back to Vocaloid 5 Editor and paste the first line of lyrics into the text box below the first note. Hit the tab key to enter the lyrics and move to the next text box. Go along like this until you have all your lyrics in, then listen to your singer and if you're in the tuning now is your chance. Once you have your Vocaloid sounding good, go to File Audio Mix Sound. A window appears with the sample rate. Note down this number because we need the same rate in Pro Tools. Then click OK. The WAV file will save in the same folder you saved the Vocaloid 5 VSQ in, which should be in the folder you made for the score. You can close Vocaloid 5 and open Pro Tools. In the dashboard window, put the name of your song and match the sample rate of your Vocaloid. Then click Create. Your software will open up to an edit window. If it does not, go to Window Edit to open it. Now, go to File Import Audio and find the WAV file of your voice on the left and click on it until it appears on the right. Then click Done. Under Audio Import Options, make the destination a new track and click OK. You will see the waveform of your voice in the first track of your edit window. Now go to the File Import MIDI and find your folder with your MIDI and click Open. Then in Destination, select New Track and select Import Tempo Map and Key Signature and click OK. The MIDI tracks will appear on your edit window. Go to File and save your song in Pro Tools in the edit window. Scroll down to the bass guitar, right click on the Notes display and in the Flyout window go to Event Operations, Transpose, set the slider to up one octave and click apply one time and close the window. For some reason the bass guitar is an octave too low. Now I'm going to show you how to put a virtual instrument in one of your MIDI tracks. You will have to repeat this process for the other instrument tracks. So to get to expand to, click on this insert right here. It says inserts A through E. Go to multi-channel plugin, instruments, expand and the synthesizer window will open. Click on this little arrow right here and the flyout window opens up and you can find all your instruments. For the flute, I went to brass and woodwind, then to flute and selected it. Now you need to assign instruments to the rest of your MIDI track. Then go to window mix and open up your mixer and master your track. Once you have your track mastered, go to your edit window and make sure this little arrow is at the end of your song. Go to file bounce mix and a bounce mix window appears. Check the Add MP3 box. Click Bounce and a filing window appears. Navigate to your Scores folder and select Use Current Folder and an MP3 box will appear. Put your name in Artist and I put the Season and Year for Album. Click OK and your song will bounce to a wave, an MP3 song in your folder you made where you can find it and use it to make a Vocaloid production. This ends this how-to video by Tracy Foes.